Hello, this is Optimal Health for All. I'm your host, OJ Odia. Optimum Health for All. We're talking about mpox it's another communicable disease mpox is uh, transmitted from persons to person but it also uh, transmitted from animals uh, to man and then man to man the name was monkeypox until very recently when WHO changed the name from monkeypox to mpox. So we'll talk to our expert, Professor Mosio Madika, to unravel all the things regarding mpox for us in our program today. Prof, you are welcome. Thanks for having me again. So, I'm talking about mpox. Yes. What is mpox? Mpox, like you said, formerly called monkeypox, is a viral infection. And usually it is spread from either animals to man or from man to man. The characteristic thing about it is that it's a pox disease, P O X. And pox diseases are characteristically diseases that cause swelling of, of the body. So you have either small or medium size or large size swellings for pox diseases. So if you remember chicken pox, this is called M pox because it is in the same family of pox diseases. So chicken pox. Chicken pox. Small pox. Small pox. Mm. And then mpox, they are all in the same um, family of viruses. The disease is transmitted um, either animals, and there are different animals that can transmit it. There isn't any particular animal that has been identified as being the transmitter. But animals that live in the wild and now have interactions with human beings can transmit it. Yes. So, why was it called monkeypox? And now, why? The name change from monkeypox to mpox. Initially, um, it, it, it was first the first case of mpox. It was called monkeypox at that time. It was identified in Democratic Republic of Congo, and because they have a very large reserve of monkeys, it was thought that the transmission was primarily from monkeys to. But as science evolved and as research evolved, it was found that. Monkeys are not the only sort of animals that can transmit. So the terminology felt felt the terminology would be misleading but to just keep it as monkeys. Besides, you don't want to stigmatize, stigmatize monkeys. monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> okay, which is which is uh, interesting because uh, animals have rights too. Animals have rights too. Right. So it's now mpox. It's now mpox. So how well, is interestingly the virus is still called monkeypox virus. Okay, how is not the, mpox virus? Okay, how is the virus transmitted from animal to man or man to man? So it's it's through contact. Okay. It's through close personal contact with the animal itself or the man that is infected, or through any of the materials or items used by those persons transmit can can transmit the virus to somebody else so contact with the person contact with animals contact with materials that have been contaminated so it's direct contact so it's direct contact it's not true secretions or it's direct contact okay okay so a person that has monkey pox sorry m pox can directly transmit transmit yes to another person yes back Body contact. By body contact or by contact with anything that has come in contact with the person's body. Okay, for my time. So yes. On. Okay. So, um, this is pretty easy, which yeah. means that it could be easy to prevent it, isn't it? It could be easy to prevent it. It's just that in the environment we find ourselves, how easy is it to present, prevent close 
close contact. contact Charlie with family members, living friends, crowded living in a crowded so. environment, being, being a yeah, being a friendly, mm. friendly set of people who wants who want to shake hands, want to greet, want to then, hug. yes, then living in spaces that are I mean crowded and having to have that close proximity with people. So that was the transmission. Yes. Now does it look different from chicken pox? It does. Pox? The the chicken pox um the, the the eruptions from chicken pox are smallish in nature and are all over um the, the body. It is also all over the body with with M pox, but the eruptions are quite big. We have large um for want of a better word, boil like manifestations and they are very painful. Those eruptions are quite discomforting mm -hmm. and quite painful. Associated with fever? Associated with fever. But even after the fever subsides, there will still be vesicles pain. remain. Yeah, the vesicles remain. Okay. And they will they will burst. Mm. And then they would that even the that process of crusting and all of that still brings it. The leaf scars. Pain. The leaf scars, yes. Yes, because it's chicken a scarring pox disease. The, chicken pox will the, not really leave much, of much scar. scars. Okay. Yes, you may not really know somebody had chicken pox, but with M pox, they you are do, quite visible yes, and scars. Will leave their mark yes, they, will, they, will leave, they will leave some scarring. Yes. Okay, so is it, uh, and we prevent it by, apart from preventing body contact and so on, any vaccinations so, against M pox? So that's really good news because. If we were having this interview a year and a half, two years ago, I would say, well, not yet, it's still happening. But currently, there's, there's vaccination for um, M Mpox, and those vaccines are actually a a available. And they, and they are effective. They are effective. They are actually effective. Um, for, for the first round of vaccination, which happened in December of 2024 in Nigeria, the target was people who are immunocompromised, that is, there's something wrong with their immune system, which makes them susceptible to getting the Mpox disease, uh, healthcare workers, and then also people who are um, maybe in, living in settings like very crowded settings, like prisons and what we call congregate settings. They were actually the target for, but as time goes on, the vaccine will become more and more available for anybody. Who requires it two doses taken one month apart and that is it that's for it. life yes okay so but is it mandatory no for travels for example no there's no my unlike no, uh, covid yes on like covid at some point vaccination was mandatory for travel um mpox is not like that even though it is an international disease of concern it is not mandatory for for, for travel. I think the difference is that with Mpox, we, we have a bit of a grab on what is going on, mm. how it can be prevented. Many of the strains of the virus are not life-threatening, but some are. So it's good to have a very good dose of caution okay, um, so when, when managing Mpox. So people don't, will not necessarily die May mm -hmm. not necessarily die. They may just go through the pain, the discomfort, get better, and move move mm -hmm. on, which is the vast majority of the cases we have seen. However, there are some situations where people have been known to, to die, die because of the disease yes. from Mpox uh, uh, disease. Yes. Okay. So that is Mpox mm -hmm. um, by way of a disease condition, mm -hmm. right? And which parts of the world do you really have Mpox being endemic at this point in time? Mpox is almost very, um, virtually everywhere. Interestingly, in Europe and the United States, cases of Mpox are there and on the increase. In West African region, they also have cases of Mpox. In the Central African region, um, we also still have cases of Mpox. So Mpox is no longer, it's not a disease not of... Not only uh, restricted to nah, region. No, it's a disease that has crossed many international boundaries. And I believe that that's part of the reason it's getting the sort of attention okay. that it has gotten. Unlike some other diseases like Lassa. 
Okay. Okay. But, uh, you know, but are basically West Africa. are not moving everywhere. So. so. Okay. So. So with, with our vaccinations, it's not mandatory for travel, mm. but it's recommended. It's recommended, okay. highly recommended, and it's safe. Okay, and it's safe. And it's safe. Yes. Okay. So now that is uh, so far what we know about mpox. Yeah. Are there any other things you want to talk to us about regarding mpox? But maybe things that people take as myths. You okay. Know, what the people believe, mm. and let's see whether we can be uh, see whether we can clarify some. So of people myths. believe there's nothing like that. Okay. Ah, it's just chicken box. Ah, this is chicken box. Yeah, box. A very serious one of chicken yeah box. so if you but if you look at the difference in the size of the swellings. It is significantly different. Even in how long the person is ill, the amount of pain and discomfort, and so on and so forth. The other thing is that, uh, well, you don't need medical intervention for mpox. You just stay at home and you will be fine. And you'll be okay. You'll be okay. That's in some, in some cases, correct. yes, it's not correct because, first of all, there are two angles to it. One, is that to the person who is going through those signs and symptoms, you have no idea whether it will be mild, moderate, or severe. No clue from where you are. And things can de deteriorate quite badly, very rapidly. very rapidly, and you can you will not be able to get the help you need on, on in time. Then from the other angle of spread, the earlier someone who has signs and symptoms comes to the health facility and starts to get treatment, the faster the person will be no longer be infective okay. because what happens is while the person is going through the signs and symptoms and the ill health is also infecting other people okay also infect so it's important that people report to health facilities on time so that they get the help they need for themselves one in good time and two they are it, it can prevent it from Infecting other people. Uh, healthcare workers are at risk. Healthcare workers are one of the major category of people that are at risk. With any of these diseases that have epidemic tendencies, healthcare workers are usually quote and unquote an endangered um, species because they are the ones likely to care for people at close range and have close contact with people. And many times, unfortunately, without the protective equipment that is required um, and the you know, measures that we, the, 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 the standard precautions and the safety measures we take when we are managing patients. So, yes, MPOX has been known to affect healthcare workers. Um, okay. So, healthcare workers, those who are immunocompromised, people living in environments where they may be crowded uh, spaces yes. and so on and so forth. Yeah would need to yeah. uh, be careful because yeah. they are at risk yeah. of contaminating and yeah. pox. Yeah. Are there any pub normal public health measures that can prevent and pox? So yes, yeah, so the, 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 the typical um, universal precaution me me measures uh, that, that have been in place that many of, many of us may know, many of our viewers may know from COVID and so on and so forth. Keep hand washing, very, very important. And hygiene, washing, using of um, a, a hand um, sterilizing sanitizer, okay. sanitizing agent. Uh, then there's also the need to quickly identify if you have any ill health and you start to see some abnormal rashes on your body. Then also the need to identify the same in other people. And then if you have to um, be in contact with someone who has or suspected to have MPOC, keep, keep your distance and be careful not to have close contact. Per personal contact. Yes. Uh, so by the way, the way uh, the virus is identified, apart from the case definition of the symptoms of fever and any rash uh, on, on, the, on the body, the way the virus is identified is through a sample is taken from the wound. Of the of the of the well, of, 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 of the pox, mm -hmm. yes, of the swelling. Mm. Especially when it if it opens, bursts open, and then starts to cross, you can take it. some fluids from it, and that is packaged, and a viral laboratory can identify. identify it. Yes. Okay. 
Thank you very much. So, we as we've talked about mpox, formerly known as monkeypox, and we've talked about how to prevent uh, contacting yeah. this uh, disease condition. These are a series of communicable diseases, and uh, we're talking about such diseases that you can prevent by normal uh, personal hygiene, hand washing, staying away in, from crowded environments, and so on. Of course, there is vaccination, which will be available, I'm sure, in this year, 2025, in, in our country. Thank you very much for watching. Optimum Health for All. Please subscribe and share. Bye for now. Optimum Health for All. Health, you know, but I'm doing health for all.